In Nigeria, a review of the 2024 budget signed by President uh, Bola Tinubu indicates that the education sector got 1.54 trillion naira, representing 6.39% of the total budget. Uh, this, according to analysts, is far below the 15% recommendation by UNESCO. Although it failed to meet UNESCO's recommendations, the education sector has one of the highest allocations alongside defense and security of 11.8% and health uh, at 5.03%. Uh, now, the higher allocation to the defense sector may be connected to the over a decade old war against insurgency in the Northeast and other security challenges ravaging different parts of the country. Uh, the health sector has also witnessed significant challenges, including a wave of brain drain and the struggles for better funding for the sector and improved welfare for health workers. Meanwhile, a review of the education budget revealed that the president budgeted 1.54 trillion naira for the Federal Ministry of Education and its agencies, including 50 billion naira for the student's loan scheme scheduled to take off in January 2024. This amount is higher than the 1.08 trillion naira the Education Ministry received in the 2023 budget. Now, staying with us to discuss all of this is uh, Lucky uh, Emonife. He is the president of NANS, that's the headquarters. We'd like to thank you for your you know, presence here. All right, uh, Lucky, you've heard all we've rolled out regarding this. It's one thing to have all these budget figures. Over time, what are your thoughts and uh, regarding where we are right now? with this present allocation and its actual implementation, you know, regarding what has been assigned and what will get to those who need them the most in the education sector. I'd like your thoughts on that. Yeah, quickly, I think uh, <clears throat> we're not yet there, still moving on a slow pace. And uh, as the universal president of NANS, who represent over 40 million Nigeria students. It is our responsibility to continuously speak, advocate for Nigeria students. Uh, we are in the process of continuous engagement for increase in our budget, especially meeting up to the UNESCO standard as required. I think we'll have opportunity of meeting with the House of Rep Committee on this uh, appropriation. Uh, we are equally thinking whether supplementary budget uh, there could be increment because it's really low, like what you said, six percent, and we're aiming at twenty-six percent, so it's really very low. But I think this should be the first highest budget in the history. So we'll continue to push. There is need, especially proper funding, for we to attain not quantity, but quality education in our education system. There are lots to do. Yeah. All right. um, so, Lucky, I would like to take this from another perspective, being that it is not, I mean, a lot of people complain about the size of the budget, but I am more concerned about the implementation Good. of the amounts that have been allocated for education over the years. Because the question now is, have we seen a judicious use of this monies to a larger extent? Agreed, it is not enough. It falls well below the standard. But the little that has been allocated over the years, how can we account for it? Or can we account for it? And can we see physical evidence that this money is being infused into the system? is actually yielding dividends. Because when there, is, when there is a physical evidence to actually hold on to, you cannot hold the government to the fire and insist that based on X, Y, Z, we've actually been able to use the monies given to us to do X, Y, Z. Give us more. You'll be able to see maybe A, B, C, D, down to Z. Exactly. Talk to me about this. Uh, I think I will align with your opinion, which is very good. I, during the public presentation and mm -hmm. the public hearing, these are some of the points we highlighted. Uh, now, so that our leadership, uh, so much concerned about our welfare, the educational system of our students. Uh, under my leadership, we are going to set up a committee. Because mm. I told the House of Rep, but it's not just budgeting. 
how do we implement them? To what extent, when you are coming for the next year budget, as the past one has been implemented, what percentage? Is it 10? Is it 20? Is it 50? So now so that my leadership, we are doing monitoring in campus so that all these educational projects highlighted in the budget, mm -hmm. those it has been given to, those who are uh, in charge of the responsibility, we monitor, get feedback from our students in different higher institutions, then para starters that concern the Ministry of Education to know the level at which they will get feedback. During the next year budget, we were able to know how impactful this 1.5 uh, trillion has been impacted in our educational system. So we have taken it as a responsibility to monitor, to have evaluation, to report back, to know the essence, not just budgeting. That's why I said, I align with your opinion, to ensure that proper thing is done, so that next year, if they are budgeting, we say, no, don't just give us this figure. This is what is achievable. This is not what is achievable. Mm. And I'm also glad you mentioned the issue of uh, qualitative education earlier on uh, when you were uh, talking about uh, you know, assessing this uh, issue here. So uh, recently, Ash ASU's uh, national president, uh, Emmanuel Osadike, said recently that the allocation for the education, as you also said, uh, is still too low. But uh, in your opinion, mm. groups like ASU, how have they also engaged you know, the government in terms of uh, making sure the education sector gets more beyond their own, you know, uh, occasional agitations for better remunerations and pay, as it were. Also, is our big brothers, senior brothers, as well. uh, apart from their personal remunerations, part of their advocacy over the years has been quality how this education sector can be improved. Because it's where they work as well. They need a good environment. Research is part of the conditions of ensuring proper and quality education. You know, government make provision for these yeah. uh, lecturers to go on research so that they can impart positively good ideas to our students. So ASU, one of the ASU advocacy is proper funding, not for only their welfare alone, but equally good learning condition for the students and for them as well too. So part of our advocacy is proper funding and improvement, not only on their welfare, but the generality of the education sector. It's part of the advocacy. If you look at ASU demands, you see that not only their welfare alone, their condition of service, but environment and uh, the institutions is as well. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure is part of ASU advocacy. And if, if I may, uh, uh, Aaron, mm -hmm. uh, the issue of grants being given towards research itself. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can't actually put a point at, uh, okay, fine, these are the statistics that such money has gone into mm -hmm. such research. You know, money has gone into it, but uh, we find out uh, very little has come out in terms of, okay, this is the research I've uh, made. Uh, have I been able to patent uh, this, uh, you know, invention, as it were, and has it actually been uh, some kind of mass production on what I have discovered during my research, you know, regarding that. So there's very little coming out in terms of research, yeah. but, you know, you do know sometimes, you know, they get the monies for the, the, uh, uh, for the grants and, and the research as well. I, I like your thoughts on that. Mm, I may not have a deep knowledge on the level of research they have undergone and the level of funding that has gone from the ministry to such a, a project. But I think if this research is properly done and money is actually released to the right persons, of course these innovations, ideas to meet up global standard will always come in because when, when this thing is done independently without bias, not to who know who, who know how, it's given to those who are meant for it. Of course, we know in a higher institution, many professors who want to go on research and impact on the student, but the funding, some even do it individually on personal funding. So such people who have this passion of doing it as actually giving the funding. Of course, when returning by, you know, the government and the one that afford you, you actually come in and impart it on the student and the effects of it will be known for global knowledge and generality of our educational system. So what I want to say on this is those with the responsibility of doing that should sit up. Like what I said on assuming office is that if you have given responsibility, it has to do with the education sector. Sit up tight because one thing 
that must be sure is that the welfare mm -hmm. of our students, mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, uh, priority of our students is our interest. We'll speak for them no matter how the situation is. Mm -hmm. All right, Lucky, let me take you up on something that is right down your alley. It's been controversial and it's looking like it will see the light of the day. They've said it will kick off in January of 2024. We are seven days into the year already, or seven days into the month already. The student loan scheme that will be kicking off. Of course, it's been earmarked in the budget. We've actually seen about 50 billion. Uh, but it has drawn controversy. I want to hear from you what you take about the student loan be because it has drawn huge controversy. Some will say that rather than disbursing this morning's as loans to people, you can probably invest that into the educational sector to bolster the educational sector. Some have actually hailed it. Where do you stand as the president of NANS concerning student loan and its implementation? Do you have any fears that it will be hijacked? Like people have, people have actually reported in some other schemes like these over the years. Mm, I think first and foremost, the idea of student loan is highly commendable. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I think he gave that promise during his campaign and he's on it and uh, we really commend him. He should go a long way to show his strong passion for education, even right from his days. As well, is that what the educational system in Nigeria, especially at the tertiary level, needs right now? Access to education, access. Mm -hmm. The loan gives you access to it. So when you have, and some people want to educate, but they don't have access to education. Mm -hmm. So assessing ed education is very key. So what I'm trying to say, the, the idea of the federal government, Mr. President, mm. is commendable. But my worries, my worries, mm. is to what extent can students assess it, attain it? For instance, if you say 10 to 50 billion has been allocated, how can they assess it? So it has to do with the issue of the flexibility of the policy and the rules. How can students have access to the conditions are rigid, they are strong, can they meet up such conditions? So what we tend doing as student leaders is to continuously doing what we call sensitization across the zones, sensitizing them on the conditions, criteria, things you need to fulfill to be able to assess it. You have to do OREA, so people don't even know how to assess, so I've not seen the bill, mm -hmm. so I've not know those who have been engaging with stakeholders, mm -hmm. private sector, because even before this government initiative, there's what we call press pay NG. They, they, this is a form of banking, they give loan to students, how to pay it back. So, no, Pem, would you just um, chip in this? Because a lot of people have questioned the mindset of Nigerians. Okay. Because, like you said, it's very commendable. Mm -hmm. But the implementation, of course, the devil is in the details. Mm -hmm. The implementation is all that matters. Some will say that, look at the Ankos Boras program, for example. Good initiative. But the fact that people kept on defaulting on the loans is threatening to kill that particular program completely. That why, what, what, why would the government think that maybe this will change, that people will collect loans today and probably want to pay sometime in the future? Okay, I think the, uh, the, the student loan, if you finish school and you are employable, or good courses, you are employable, of course, if the government is serious, except there is, no, uh, uh, there is no seriousness in recovering it, because recovering the money matters a lot. That will make it to be on a continuous Look, process. Same as the Ancos Boros program. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm just trying uh, to What I'm trying to say, if, yes. if the student you are giving the loan, the additives, especially this one has to do with the central bank, your BVN is required, even no matter how your financial transaction, if you are employed, of course, you must do bank transactions. So your details educated people, you graduated, you do NYC. So your, that, there will be a database, of course, of all those giving this loan, mm. except those in charge with the responsibility of giving it out. They are not serious with their job. Because for instance, if 100 persons has been involved in this loan in Lagos State, we know the data. We get their details, we get their BVN. Any bank transaction you do, even as a private individual, you are employable in the private sector, for instance, arise. Of course, the government, the CBN, will know that, yes, they, you are receiving salary. They will take their money. Can you do employment without a BVN? You cannot. Is the okay. truth. Okay. Then even the security agencies will know that. If government wants to go after those who are defaulting, they can't. Okay. Yeah. So, talking some specifics now, um, just before we go, uh, the uh, Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TED Fund, mm. 
um, is not included in the budget. It is a tax imposed on the profit of Nigerian companies at 2%. So how relevant has it been over time, do you think, in the, uh, uh, in the fortunes of education sector in this country? Yeah, as regards state fund, uh, even before becoming as president, state fund has been a very active intervention, education intervention body or agency. You get it? Because there is no higher institution in the country you go to. You see gingetic projects of state fund. You see even students, even this uh, research we're talking about, yeah. I think ten for to equally do funding okay. towards it. Yeah. So what we just advocate for is continuous improvement. Because no institution, no higher institution, every year you see up to three ten for projects. So if more funds too is given, and our education need to be properly funded, our curriculum as well need to be reviewed, I think there could be proper improvement. But as regards state fund, since it is not included in the budget, thank for they are doing well. From my own personal observation, because I know across all the government, state and federal university, polytechnic, colleges of education, a year you must see projects of third fund. Yeah. All right, Lucky, I want to say thank you very much, Lucky, the president of the Nigeria Association of, uh, National Association of Nigerian Students. I want to say thank you very much for joining us to talk about the educational sector. Yeah. And Happy New Year, it's by the way. It's my pleasure. Happy New Year. Thank okay. you. Thank you.